What is going on YouTube? My name is Brent and welcome to part 10 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Flappy Birds. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to be talking about our bird colliding with our tube obstacles. So we're going to be discussing collision. Now collision can be handled in a few different ways. Uh, the first way is check uh, every object in the game world to see if it's colliding with our object. Or the second way is to check just obstacles near uh, our player to see if it collides. Since our game world only consists of basically four different tubes, well, eight if you think of top and bottom tubes as separate entities, um, our way uh, in this tutorial will be to just check all eight objects to see if it collides. In a bigger game world where you have multiple different things that it can collide with, um, you're going to want to find out a different strategy than the one we're going to be using in this tutorial. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start in our tube class. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be drawing invisible rectangles around the outside of our tube textures, our top and our bottom tube. So when the bird actually crosses into that uh, invisible rectangle, we'll consider that a collision. So let's go ahead and start by using private rectangle from Bad Logic. And we're going to call this bounds uh, top and bounds bot, okay? Now we're going uh, to create both of those here. We'll actually create them below our position here. So bounds top equals new rectangle. And the rectangle object takes in four parameters, or what we're going to be using four parameters. And that is the x and y coordinates and then the, uh, the width and the height. So uh, the x coordinate will be uh, position top tube dot x and then position top tube dot y and then we're going to be using uh, top tube dot get width is the width and top tube dot get height is the height and then similarly for the bottom tube uh, bounds bot equals new rectangle and position of the bottom tube dot x position of the bottom tube dot y and then bot tube oops what is my name of it it's the bottom bottom tube dot get width and these should all be the same as the top tube as well but we'll just use these um, bottom tube dot get height and there we go. We've set our invisible rectangles uh, at the initial point of our uh, creation of our tubes. Next, when we reposition our tubes, we also have to reposition those invisible rectangles. So bounds uh, top dot set position, since we don't need to reset the size, set position. And then we'll do uh, position of the top tube dot x and uh, position of the top tube dot y again and same with the bounds bot um, dot set position and position of the bot tube dot x and position of the bot tube dot y there we go finally we're going to create a boolean method so public boolean uh, collides and it's going to take in a rectangle uh, rectangle and we're going to call that the player rectangle that we'll create shortly and it's going to return um, if um, the player dot overlaps our bottom or bounds top or our player uh, dot overlaps our bounds bottom Okay, and so that will just return true if the player and the tube overlap each other. Um, so moving on to our bird class, um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw an invisible rectangle around our bird. So we'll do a private bounds, oops, rectangle, uh, bound, and we'll call it bounds. And then this one will be bounds equals new rectangle. And the X will be the X, the Y, and then uh, texture. 
oops it will be bird dot get width and bird dot get height every time our bird moves we need to update its bounds so bounds dot set position and we'll set it at our position dot x and our position dot y and then we're going to create a new method down here um, public uh, rectangle um, oops rectangle and then we'll call it get bounds and it will return our bounds so now that we've done all that check out how easy this is going to be we're going to go to our play state and since we've already got a for loop that cycles through all of our tubes we can just check to see if each one of those tubes is touching our player um, like I said this is not the appropriate way to do it in a larger scale world where there's lots of objects you can collide with for performance reasons but you'll have to find out how to do that another way maybe I'll talk about that in a future video uh, but for now let's go ahead and say if uh, tube dot collides with bird dot get bounds we're gonna say uh, gsm dot set new play state and give it back our gsm let's go ahead and hit run and see what we got going on for us so hopefully it loads up quick this time so i'm not going to pause the video so here we go menu state uh, oh look it seems to be working every time we touch a tube we, our game restarts so there we go collision in like five minutes guys not too shabby i don't think so I think we'll go ahead and cut it here for this video. We did a lot. We talked about drawing invisible rectangles around our tubes and our player. Then we saw if those rectangles overlapped each other uh, and we called that a collision, in which case we reset our play state uh, and started basically a new game. Now I know a lot of developers that have used libgdx in the past are probably horrified watching these videos because we haven't disposed of any of our textures, uh, which leads to memory leaks, especially when we're recreating that play state over and over and we're creating new textures every single time. Uh, so for that reason, we're in the next video, we're going to talk about disposing those textures, freeing up that memory. Um, so if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Share it if you want. Uh, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.